We are with Larry, he's from the United States. He's doing a lot of things. He's doing his own business in Brussels. He's supporting the local elections in Brussels. He's also a volunteer representative of the Democrats from the United States. He will also say how it is to be an international community member. Hi Larry. Hello, it's uh... Uh, can you introduce yourself to us, maybe? I'm Larry Moffat. I'm an American citizen. I've been living in Brussels for 22 years now, and I'm quite active in the international community here. Uh, Brussels is one of the most international cities in the world. Uh, that's why I like it. Uh, every day I meet people from all over Europe, from all over the world. I think that's a great strength, uh, and I think it's important to uh, recognize that and to uh, make the most of it. I think uh, we should uh, be exchanging our ideas, uh, sharing best practices and working together to make Brussels uh, an even better place to live. Well, I'm self-employed as a business consultant. I work with uh, small companies and startups, mostly in the IT sector, and I help them to develop and expand their business internationally. And with your fluent French? Uh, it's not common for Americans, but I'm fortunate to uh, have been able to learn several languages. I went to school in French. Uh, my mother was Italian. I've worked in Germany. Uh, but actually, I find that English is the, the most useful here in Brussels because it's really the, the international uh, working language. We are having the local elections now. Yes. And I met you in this debate. We had seven parties together talking about what they wanted to do. But the, the specific point there was that they were non-Belgians exactly. voting in Belgium for Belgian local elections. Yes, that's right. Uh, so uh, European citizens who are not Belgian uh, can run as candidates in the local elections. And of course they can also vote, uh, but for that they have to register and uh, unfortunately over the past elections uh, most of them have not taken that step to register. So already since 2006 I have tried uh, to encourage uh, non-Belgians to register and to exercise their right to vote. It's an important right that uh, the Belgian government has granted them and, and I really feel that they should uh, take advantage of that, especially in a city like Brussels where one-third of the population is not Belgian. So you are a socially responsible citizen that is uh, putting a lot of effort in this, not for Europe only, but for the United States as well, I believe. Yes, that's right. Um, I became let's say, politically active, engaged uh, already when I was in the U.S. in graduate school. I uh, campaigned for Jesse Jackson in the 1988 elections. So uh, that shows that I tend to be sort of more on the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Um, and uh, since coming to Belgium, I've remained active in the Democratic Party as a volunteer for Democrats Abroad Belgium, which represents the U.S. Democratic Party here and which uh, tries to encourage uh, U.S. citizens uh, living here to register to vote in, uh, in U.S. elections. And of course we have uh, midterm elections coming up in November and so Democrats Abroad will be very active in encouraging Americans to, to, uh, to vote. And uh, so it came quite naturally to me to also encourage uh, people here in Brussels to vote in the local elections. You are not ever? Uh, no, that's right. I'm honored to be uh, standing behind uh, a, a famous uh, leader of the Democratic Party, uh, President Kennedy. And uh, interestingly enough, when I was in graduate school, it was just about the time of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And I remember uh, every day while I was trying to study, I would listen to the BBC and uh, hear about what was happening in uh, Germany, in um, uh, 
Pol Poland, in, uh, in uh, Romania and so forth, and uh, wishing that I could have been uh, here to, to experience that firsthand. So uh, I was not here for the fall of the Berlin Wall, but I went to Berlin for the uh, 20th uh, anniversary of the fall. And uh, so, um, yes, it's, uh, it just shows what, you know, uh, citizens can do uh, once they mobilize and, uh, and put pressure on, uh, on politicians. Well, that will grow, I suppose. How do you look at the situation now in Belgium? What is the most prior item for you that should change? Well, um, Brussels is a very complicated place in terms of local politics. It's divided into these 19 relatively small municipalities. Uh, some of them have been run by the same politicians for decades now. And um, I think particularly this year, uh, many citizens have uh, really been very disappointed by some scandals that have emerged, by uh, projects that seem to take forever, um, by initiatives that are taken without any kind of consultation of the citizens. And uh, so I think the time really is ripe now for change and uh, we see that alongside the traditional parties there are uh, what they call citizen lists that are uh, running uh, and uh, proposing different ways of uh, doing politics and so it's going to be very difficult for them uh, as new uh, candidates uh, who don't have the resources of the big political parties but it'll be very interesting to see how, how well they do in the elections. So we'll find out on the 14th of October. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.